Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Jenny. Thanks for joining us today. I'm part of the partner team over here at ShipStation. So hopefully you're familiar with ShipStation. And if not, you might be missing out a little bit, but we'll get you familiar today. Um, we're the leading e-commerce shipping solution that allows you to pull your orders from wherever you sell. So Amazon, eBay, Shopify, and print labels and uh, figure out and ship it to wherever you want um, from whichever carrier you want. So FedEx, UPS, Amazon, FBA, whatever it is for you. And we can, we give you automation tools um, that will help your shipping process become more efficient. Um, since we believe in that kind of efficiency, which is why we're partnered with our lovely friends from Avalara, um, who also help you streamline the tax process for after you sell and ship. So that's it really for me, and I'm really excited to introduce you to Matt, who's going to enlighten us a little bit more about Amazon FBA um, and the tax around that, and I'll let him introduce himself and kick it off. Awesome. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you very much. And Avalara has, has, has just worked uh, to, to establish a partnership with Ship, Ship, Ship Station and got a lot of good things going. We actually... Um, you know, did some partnership events when we were down at the Amazon Prosper Show out in Vegas uh, uh, about a month or two ago. So great partnership starting out right now. And, and we're going to talk a lot about sales tax today. Sales tax 101, specifically selling on Amazon, whether you're doing FBM or FBA, we'll cover a lot of that and really what that means today. So um, I'm going to run through a few slides today. Uh, I promise you this will not be a, a death by PowerPoint presentation, but we can make it interactive in the end. So we'll, we'll go through about 10 or 15 slides. I'll walk you through kind of how our product works for Amazon sellers, how we can file the returns, not necessarily the why Avalara, but really, you know, why outsource and why talk to a company about helping you out with, with your obligations in the FBA program. So a couple of things we'll talk about today on the agenda. Number one will be Nexus. So Nexus meaning where do you have the obligation to collect tax? Uh, why and how this is more complex for Amazon sellers, what it means to your business outside of Amazon. So let's say you're doing FBA, but then you have a personal website. What does that mean? <clears throat> I'll touch on a couple of points from to show you some examples of, you know, setting up your account within uh, Seller Central to calculate the correct tax, what you need to click on, what you need to not do, um, what Avalara can help with and, and what is kind of outside of our scope. Uh, we will discuss best practices just for sales tax compliance as a whole, what we see as far as industry, industry trends, um, and, and how we can help on an ongoing basis, right? Uh, Avalara Trust Files is our main product. We'll talk about that, as well as an inventory report to help you out and help you better understand what you have done in the past uh, moving forward. And then we'll open it up to Q&A. So again, I'll be the only one speaking for the first uh, probably 30 to 45 minutes of this webinar today. If you have a question that comes up, please type it in the chat box or type it in the Q&A for the Zoom meeting when you feel like you have the question so we don't forget. So type it in now. I'll then answer and address those as we get closer towards the end of the webinar today. <clears throat> so again, my name is Matt Hammond. I'm a national sales manager here at Avalara. I've been with Avalara uh, a little over three and a half, four years. Uh, I have worked with the small to medium sized business uh, units for quite some time, specifically QuickBooks users, kind of the smaller office, home office, if you will. Uh, I live just outside of Raleigh, North Carolina and Holly Springs. I'm an avid golfer. I have three coon hounds that take up a majority of our couches. I have a black cat that is 20 pounds and a sub five foot tall uh, wife who is uh, bonds with the, the dogs thoroughly on a, on a daily basis. So that's a little bit about me, uh, a lot of golf, a lot of fishing, and the coon. So a couple things, right? Uh, let's talk a little bit about ShipStation, who we're partnering with, and kind of, you know, what they do, right? So ShipStation, from a multi-channel perspective, is, you know, they're going to allow e-commerce merchants to pull their orders in from any marketplace or, or a shopping cart to, to therefore all, obviously, print labels, you know, for, from a carrier, uh, obviously, FBA included. Uh, they have quite a few automation rules where their software is going to allow the merchants to customize the shipping, you know, for whatever they need, however they want it to be seen or sent or, or et cetera, right? So that's a, a great benefit with ShipStation. Uh, the analytic tools and branding, uh, ShipStation can see data on where they're shipping the most from, which carrier, what marketplace you're selling on, <clears throat> and then also where the customers are. Right, so it's going to give you a lot of uh, a lot of data and a lot of analytics that's going to help you know make your life a lot easier when it comes to growing your business, 
uh, using most multi aspects of, of your business to, to you know stay compliant, to be on point, to, to make everything look as professional as possible as a business. And they can also use uh, you can also use the software to upload a logo or a brand to track your packages as well as returns and then their labels. So some of the great benefits of Ship, ShipStation. Great company, great partnership, great people. Uh, we're really glad to be, be working with them and, and hosting this webinar, uh, co-hosting this webinar with them today. So let, let's get into the, the nitty gritty, right? Nexus. So Nexus is a word, if you learn nothing from our webinar today, I, I truly feel confident that you'll have a very good understanding about what Nexus is. So Nexus, the definition here, a sufficient physical presence. It's a legal term that refers to requiring companies for doing business in a state to collect and pay tax on state on sales in that state. The way I also like to phrase it is, you know, it's an industry term that states you have established some sort of physical presence or a tie to a taxing authority outside of your home state. So if you live in North Carolina, like I do, and let's say you have your own website and all your inventory and all of your employees and everything you have is in North Carolina, you would only have an obligation to collect tax in North Carolina, right? We'll talk a little bit about what that means when you get enrolled in the FBA program here shortly. But Nexus is an industry term that establishes why you need to collect and remit tax outside of the state that you're located in. And I'll give a bunch of examples today. Nexus is where everything starts. So everything you see on the screen here is really the are really the reasons why you may need to collect or remit tax outside of your home state. So if you have multi-state locations, if you have contract employers, if you drop ship, if you go to trade shows, if you pay commission to resellers, 1099, inventory, all of these check marks are the top reasons why people need to get registered to collect and remit tax outside of their home state. So let's say you're brand new to Amazon. You're enrolled in the FBA program, we'll get into that here in a second, but you have 1099 contractors in three states. You potentially need to get registered to collect and remit tax and file a tax return in those three states based on the requirements. Now, each state is different. What I tell most companies and most folks that I speak to, a lot of controllers and CFOs, you need to go on the Department of Revenue website, so the DOR for those individual states, and a lot of times, they will tell you what they consider nexus building activities for that particular state. <clears throat> for example, some states don't feel that inventory is a reason to have uh, an obligation to collect tax. Same with trade shows and drop shipments, you know, affiliates. But for the most part, if we stay high level with this, not to get off track, if you have any of these things on the screen related to your business, you may need to get registered in whatever states those are uh, conducting it or where those are happening. So again, nexus, an industry term, means you've established some sort of physical presence or an obligation to a taxing authority outside of your home state to collect and remit tax, potentially based on what you see on the screen here. So now we get into the real nitty gritty, right? What does it mean if you're an FBA seller? So there are 30 states currently, and I have a couple of visuals that will, that will bring this uh, tenfold here in a minute that we'll talk to it so you can get a better idea. But there are 30 states that currently have FBA warehouses in them. So 30 total states. So when you get enrolled in the FBA program, they can potentially put your product in any of these 30 states. You need to really look in the fine print. A lot of times it will be a long year agreement that we'll discuss, um, you know, that the seller is, is on the hook for, for remitting the tax and actually handling the payments. Uh, I'll let you do that at your leisure. I don't have a, a current agreement, but 26 of the next states basically are saying that having inventory be a third party constitutes nexus, meaning 26 of those 30 states say, hey, if you're in this FBA program, you need to get registered to collect and remit tax in those states. We have a threshold that we like to discuss, right? When you come to Avalara or, or any tax provider or any third party solution that says, hey, we've been selling on Amazon and in the FBA program for five years, but we've only been registered in Ohio. That's not necessarily a good thing. Now, what it could mean is you either have a lot of exposure or a little exposure. We use a $5,000 threshold for past tax exposure, meaning if you are less than $5,000 in Tennessee, which is an FBA state, we typically recommend just doing a historical registration where we'll get you registered in there, we'll file four to up to four to 10 returns in the rears, and then you just get compliant going forward and you say, hey, here I am, here's my returns, here's some tax, I wanna, I wanna file taxes moving forward. That's if you owe under $5,000. Now, 
We recommend if you owe more than $5,000 in past tax, a more formal approach, meaning a potential voluntary disclosure agreement. I worked with a company last week. They've been on Amazon for five years. Uh, they do about $3 million a year, and they ran our inventory report, which I'll show everyone here later in the broadcast. <laughs> and they owe the state of California about $250,000 to $300,000 of potential past tax exposure. They recommended and, and volunteered to go on the, the BDA program to hopefully limit the look back period, hopefully waive some penalties and interest, and, and, and get compliant moving forward. A lot of things are happening with Amazon and in the marketplace today where these are becoming more and more common, right? A lot of people are really nervous about what they should do. Now, I'm not a tax expert. I'm not a tax attorney. I can't tell you what to do. A lot of people are just going to go change their name and start a whole new business and get registered. But when you do that, and then California says, okay, you're a brand new business, but in your first month, you did a half a million dollars in sales. That's a huge red flag. So any questions pertaining to what I'm speaking to right now, please type them in, as many or as little as you have. They can be very broad, they can be very thorough. We'll address them at the end with a lot of questions about this typically, okay? Uh, and again, the amount of exposure determines you know, what your options are from a compliance perspective. So under 5,000, we typically recommend a historical registration, get registered, file some returns. If you are over, oh, over $5,000 in tax, we typically recommend a more formal approach and we will work with the state on your behalf uh, to limit your look back period. So just continuing, so this is a, there are two visuals on this slide and then the next, right? There are a list of the Amazon FBA states that you can see above. There are three states that don't have tax, so Delaware, New Hampshire, and Oregon. North Carolina, where I'm located, is actually a sorting center. So it's not a fulfillment warehouse. It's just a, a sorting center. It's a big warehouse. I've driven by twice, just being honest. And that's just product are in there. It's not considered Nexus building. It's just sorting it to then go to another warehouse where that could potentially lead you to have to get registered. So just a visual from, you know, the states, and this one will help a little bit more. So <clears throat> on the bottom left of the screen, you can see the states that have the fulfillment centers. So they're just really going to let you know where most of your products potentially are. I spoke to a lady last week. And what she reiterated to me was California, Texas, Pennsylvania. I can't remember the, third, the fourth one. I want to say it was, it might have been, I think it was Illinois. There's four main states that typically your products get into right away. California, Texas, Illinois, and Pennsylvania. So if you're nervous about getting registered in 20 states at a time, we typically recommend to evaluate those four because there's a high percentage chance you're going to have your inventory in those particular states rather quickly in the FBA program. So again, all the states in orange are the ones that have uh, fulfillment warehouses, the ones you'll see highlighted in blue. Those are what we call home rule states. They're very challenging uh, just to highlight those as well. So <clears throat> what's really happening in the courtrooms today, uh, there's a Wayfair, uh, a court case going on right now. It's Wayfair for South Dakota. Uh, that's challenging, really, uh, whether or not you need to collect tax based on a, a substantial physical presence. So uh, it's a big, 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 big deal that's going on right now. It can change the landscape of, of all the other states to then take something to court. Because think about it like this, everyone, right? Sales tax is just a pass-through expense. It's never your money. It's always the state's money. Amazon's calculating, collecting. It's up to you to then remit, right? Washington and Pennsylvania are actually filing the tax for vendors. So if the only reason you have Nexus or have an obligation to collect tax in Washington and or Pennsylvania is through the FBA program, Amazon is handling that for you. You don't have to get registered. Now, if you had a contract employee or if you had an obligation to collect tax in Pennsylvania aside from the FBA, then you'd be doing that yourself. Again, type those questions in. It's not as quick and thorough of an answer, uh, as cut and dry as you like. Uh, we can address it on a one-off or a talk after the webinar. And then Massachusetts. Massachusetts basically got the list of every single person that was in the FBA program, and the state got a hold of it. it it's only a matter of time before other states are going to do the same thing, or they're going to try and get that list from Massachusetts. So uh, this is not to scare everybody. This is more educational, right? I'm not saying. You need to go do these things, but this is typically what we're seeing with people that are selling on Amazon, that are enrolled in the FBA program, and some of the challenges and, and, and pitfalls and, and things you need to be aware of moving forward as you grow your business. I mean, we're May 23rd of 2018. You know, a lot can change in, in two years or six months, okay? 
<laughs> there is an economic economic nexus law that is that is currently going on uh, in the states, and I'll, 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 I'll probably ask you to kind of research some of that on your own. But for example, I think North Dakota is one where if you do over 200 transactions for uh, if you do over 200 transactions a month, it typically is. They, they consider that economic nexus where even if you don't have a physical presence, you may still have to get registered in um, in some of those states. And a couple things, like the states that are highlighted in blue, just, just to go back uh, a little bit, the Colorado, Louisiana, and Alabama. When I say home rule states, it doesn't have a huge impact on uh, you know this audience, so to speak, but what it means is the states will have local administered taxes as well as locally administered forms or returns in addition to the state return. So you may have to send a return in for Commerce City, Colorado, as well as the state of Colorado. They have their own rules. Arizona used to be home rule. They just recently changed. So Colorado, Louisiana, and Alabama have their own local rules, local returns, local taxes that are administered in addition to a state tax. Okay. And any questions that you have, please type those in. I'm not, I'm not looking at the Q&A box. I'm going to wait till we get all the way through the end. Uh, but we can talk about that as well. So here's what's going on in the courts, a preview of what it looks like for all of those states, uh, the challenging states like uh, Colorado, Louisiana, Alabama, and then also the economic laws that are that are going across right now. And, and who knows? I mean, for example, these states in purple, there could be 10 of those next year or 15 the year after. So uh, it's a very, very interesting uh, time to be an Amazon seller and also to be in the sales tax. All right, so I'm gonna drag a couple things on my screen here that are gonna walk through how you set up and what it looks like in your seller account or within the Amazon seller. So you have tax methodology, calculation rules, uh, the tax settings and the tax codes. And this is not very uh, formal, but I'm just gonna drag some of this up on my screen here so everybody can see it. So I have four of these I'm gonna share with you. So the Amazon tax methodology, uh, it's going to describe how you calculate tax. You can see this right in your Amazon seller account. It's got the contents, what you need to pick on, your tax codes, etc. Just so you can see what these look like. And then you're also going to have your actual tax codes. So this is where you're going to tell Amazon, you know, what you're selling, right? Is what we're selling always tax? Well, this is straight from the Amazon seller account. This is nothing Avalara produces. This is nothing we do. We do not do this for you. You have to set this up prior to even talking to Avalara or prior to even utilizing our software from a automation perspective. So, uh, and I'll just scroll down here just briefly so you can say, you know, always taxable, always non-taxable, whether you're doing book rentals or whatever, these are all of the tax codes that Amazon has, <coughs> excuse me, uh, for products and goods, and goods and services. And again, this is all located in your Amazon seller central account. Uh, in the tax settings, two more, and then I'll be done and we'll keep going with the PowerPoints. So this is where it's going to have your tax calculation rules, everything you need to know, where you actually check those boxes. You know, if you're if it's an exempt person, uh, if you're going to default to the, the the generic tax code, okay. And then in the Amazon tax settings, right? This is where you're going to notate whether or not you so you have Arizona, your state ID number, and then the jurisdictions that you want them to actually calculate back. You do gift wrapping, shipping and handling, etc. So this is just a few visuals so you can see what it looks like on the seller account, and I'll be happy to send these over when you get done. Again, most of the questions I hear from this are typically directed to Amazon because they're outside of Avalara's scope uh, of compliance. All right, so next step, compliance. Compliance is our favorite word today. So know where, your pro where you collect, where is your inventory being stored? You'll see a big star here. We're going to show you something that's really neat, that's very beneficial. And if you sign up for a free trial of Trust File, which is 30 days, and we actually load in uh, three free filing credits, I'll show you here shortly uh, where your inventory is being stored. We have an inventory report that I'll, I'll show you a couple examples of here in a second. But number one, th there's three or four options, right? Option one, get registered in all FBA states. Get registered in 26 states, start filing tax returns, start remitting taxes. Just get compliant. Number two, seek assistance from an outside tax professional, CPA, tax attorney, whoever. You can talk to Matt at Avalara. I'm pretty direct. I'll, I'll tell you what I think. Again, I'm not a CPA or a tax attorney. I can't give advice, uh, but we can definitely help you out from a compliance perspective moving forward. Uh, option three, do nothing. Risk non-compliance. Again, I spoke with a guy last year who's in, you know, 
uh, two states, but he, he, he's been in the FBI program for 10 years and he's just hoping no one ever talks to him, hoping nobody ever reaches out. It's not a great way to go about your business or about your life, you know, hoping that California or Texas never calls you. Uh, I personally would have a hard time doing that, but that's just me. Option four, uh, outsource compliance efforts to, to our tax advisory team. We can help get registered if you need to get a tax ID in those states. We can then also help you with the remittance and then also of the filing of the tax return uh, on an ongoing basis. And I'll dive into trust file uh, here shortly. So what is trust file? I've said it a bunch today. I'm sure there's quite a few folks on the phone that are like, I don't know what this word is. He keeps saying. So trust file is a filing solution, right? It's going to take the data from the marketplaces. So Amazon, eBay, Jet, Walmart, uh, uh, eBay, Etsy, all of, all of those. It's going to take all of that data, ingest it, and then it's going to flow it over to a report. It's then going to give you a signature ready return for filing. And we're actually going to file directly through the software. And I'll show you what it looks like here shortly, where you just have to literally log in once a month or once a quarter, depending on your filing frequency, and then click a button. And we will then handle everything else. One of the benefits of TrustFile is you're uploading or we're syncing or taking all of your transactional data from the marketplaces. However, we don't charge for the transactions. We are not making any tax determination. So whatever comes to TrustFile already has an order a bill to, a ship to, the price, and the tax. It already has all that information. We're just recognizing it, putting it to a form, and making sure it's getting remitted to the states. So we don't charge for transactions because Amazon's calculating the tax. Uh, we have accurate sales tax reports. And then again, we offer a free 30-day trial uh, where you can actually try out the product, upload your information. It takes about, depending on how far back you sync everything in Amazon, uh, it can take about, I know, a couple of days to a week, sometimes it'll take like an hour, uh, but you can tell us how far back you want to if you need to file some amended returns or handle some back filing or something along those lines for anything you may have done in the past. I'm going really quick, apologies, I just had a coffee. So uh, if you have any questions or if you need me to uh, repeat anything, please type it in the, in the chat and we'll address it here shortly. So the next thing that we have, which is a true benefit for Avalara, is our inventory report. And I'm going to drag it on the screen here so everybody can see what it looks like. So Avalara felt it'd be a really good idea over the past couple um, past couple months and then the years prior to see if we could find a way to, to help people understand, you know, when did they start having product in a state? You know, what does their exposure look like, right? So in the trust file report, you'll see here, it's going to have the states on the left. It's going to have the first time you fulfilled an order from that state, the first time you sold into that state, the total dollar amount or your total sales in that state, your average per month, and then the tax that was collected. So that you can utilize and access this report just by signing up for a free 30-day trial. It takes about a week to generate, so just be patient. It will then pop up in the right side of trust file, which I'll show you here in a minute, just so you can see where it is. But this is a good way to, what we like to call it a, kind of like a free exposure analysis. So let's say you've been an FBA for five years and you're only collecting tax in Florida, or you're only filing a tax return in Florida. You will come in here and go, okay, well, um, it's telling me here that I did, you know, Illinois, US, this is just a little bit more broken down for the individual sales and the orders, but it will tell you how much you have in those states, what your potential liabilities are. So gross sales, so 448,000 in California, and if I've never, collected tax, or if I've never remitted tax in there, that could be a, a big no-no. That'll let you know, okay, we potentially want to go to California anonymously to make sure we don't owe them a six-figure fine, right? So just think about it like that when it comes to the inventory report. Very beneficial. Uh, it's a great thing for Avalara, great thing for TrustFile, and, and great for the FBA dollars. And, and again, if you have any questions, please, please type them in. We can cover a little more uh, throughout the call. So what does it cost? Again, trust file is the, the do-it-yourself assisted filing tool. Uh, we have a standard option, which is $240 a year, and then it's $18 per return for the first 50. If you go over 50, it goes down to, I believe, $12 per return. So that's standard. A lot of people that will use the standard are just in one state or they're doing fulfillment by merchant, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we have a premium offering where for $3,000 a year, we will file unlimited filings. So basically one return a month in those state, in every state. So the premium offering is typically for FBA sellers who are already registered or are getting registered in up to 26 states. 
Um, we'll give an onboarding. You'll actually have a welcome call. Uh, we'll check in with you 30 days later when it comes time for your first filing. Uh, just to make sure you're good, you understand the software, you have reminded to, to go in and click file now. Uh, but the premium offering is typically something our, our FBA sellers that are enrolled in all those states are, are typically taking advantage of. So a couple things, right? We have data extractors where we're going to pull the information automatically. And then we also have uploads. So everything you're going to see on the left side is going to flow into trust file automatically. You don't have to do anything. You just have to set up your zero account, your big commerce, your Amazon account. And then I think some of them are, are once a day, uh, once every three days, or maybe once a week. Uh, where it's actually going to pull that information automatically and you don't have to do anything. All the other ones like eBay, PayPal, um, GoDaddy, uh, WooCommerce, and there, there's a lot of them. Those are more so where we don't have a direct uh, connector or integration where we're going to just, you have to upload that information. Now it's very simple. <clears throat> a bill to, a ship to, what you sold, how much the order was, and how much tax. You basically have like five different items out of this, out of the actual sales order that you need to upload, and we will then reference that and then get it ready for a for a return. So the ones on the right, you'll have to upload, pretty simple, not very challenging. Uh, and then we also have the connectors or extractors, if you will, for the ones on the left side of the screen where it will pull that information automatically uh, in a timely manner. So I'll send these links out. Uh, we have a guide to the all states ruling through TrustFile, uh, information about Amazon as far as their fulfillment program, uh, the Quill versus North the Quill versus North Dakota uh, Supreme Court from 2012. You can actually read that one. Uh, the Wafer versus South Dakota, what they're trying to change right now from an online sales tax perspective. And then obviously the, the final one was where Amazon agreed to turn over their data from their third party sellers to the state officials of Massachusetts. So there's a lot going on. It's worth a read. You know, take some time before football starts on Sunday. Now's your best time. It's, it's only a couple months down the corner, but um, Definitely worth uh, giving yourself some some knowledge about this, and as you grow your business, and as you continue to uh, to, to sell on Amazon. All right, so I'm going to jump back on my screen here, and we're going to walk through kind of a little demonstration of Trust File, so you can see what it looks like and kind of how it works. And we're about 30 minutes in. This will probably only take another probably five or 10 minutes or so on the Trust File side. And then we'll open it up to Q and A. There, there weren't any CPA, CPE credits or anything like that today, so we'll, we'll leave it open for, for quite a few minutes of Q and A. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So again, Trust File is our solution to help marketplace sellers file their tax returns. We're going to bring the data in. We're going to ingest it. You're going to tell us what forms you file, how often you file them, and then you can actually tell us if you want to if you want to utilize Trust File for the remittance or if you want to remit directly to the state. A lot of folks do that. They just want to remit directly to the state. Perfectly fine. <clears throat> so a couple of things. I'm going to go to settings. This is where you're going to put your username and password just to get set up. You'll have your company information. So Avalara, phone number, time zone, business address. And then here's where you're going to have payment information, right? We are, you'll see here three filing credits left. We load three filing credits uh, for the actual free trial. So if you get in and you're just remitting tax in one state, you can file your returns through Avalara for free for a couple of months. You can actually manage multiple companies within a single dashboard. And I'm going to go into one company. So we have a, a couple options, right? If you're an Amazon seller and you have multiple filing entities, this is what the dashboard would look like. So we call it an accountant version. In essence, you can manage multiple companies. So this Avalara company and the new test company may have different tax IDs, different filing obligations, different returns, everything, different frequency. We'll go into Avalara just so you can see kind of what it looks like. And within TrustFall, it's just going to open up a whole separate tab. So it doesn't ask you out or anything like that. And the first thing it's going to show you are the current returns. So this is going to tell you every return you have due, the total amount, anything you need to make as far as adjustments or credits. I'll click on Florida. Just so you can see what it shows, it will tell you the net tax uploaded, the total amount that you're going to remit. You're going to have a file now button. You can print the return. It's already going to have your account information, which I'll show you here in a second. You're going to have the form you're filing. And then it's, you're actually going to be able to see the form that is being filed to the state with your information, with all of the taxable sales, how much tax is collected, and how much tax is due for those individual states. So you have all this just by being a trust file user. Now you have to set out your filing frequency. You don't have to use this to file the returns, but 
when it's all right here and it's one click of a button away, it's typically a lot easier and a lot more fluent than manually doing it on the DOR. And when I go into the company uh, state settings, this is where you're actually going to put your you know, certificate number, your tax ID, your form, your frequency. You have to tell Avalara or you have to tell Trustfile, I file the FLDR15 as opposed to the FLDR15CS. When you get registered, whether it's through us or through yourself on the DOR website, the state is going to determine your filing frequency and the form you file based on the questions that you answer about your business. So if you tell them your estimated tax is $500,000 a month, they're probably gonna want you to be a monthly filer. If it's a lower amount, they may make you an annually filer, but then that can change two months later when you do $100,000 in sales, $6,000 in tax. Uh, they have the right to, to change your filing frequency at any point in time. And then again, right here, you can actually click a button that says I remit directly to the state. <clears throat> so uh, you can actually see a liability report and this is going to show you, this is on the same page, if you will, so still in Florida, and it's going to show you the state, the county, the city, so total sales, adjustments, what was taxable, tax collected, et cetera. You have all of this information at your disposal by being an Avalara customer and using TrustFile. And I'll click on the current returns just to go back. And we'll show you over here, recruiting tax, free trial. Right here is where the inventory report will show up once you have it generated. We'll see here three free filing credits. We have a bunch of frequently asked questions. You can click on these. Uh, you can regenerate the returns. And again, that we file all of the state level returns. So in Colorado, if you do have some local jurisdictions, we'll file the state return. We'll tell you how much you owe at the local level, but you would then have to file that local return by yourself uh, outside of trust file. And I would say hopefully in the next year or two, we will have the ability to file those local returns. It's something we've been working diligently on for. Uh, six months to a year, it's just, it's just a matter of time before we have that functionality. So the second tab over, I'll click on states and history, and here's where it's going to show you all of the states that we have been filing or are filing, right? So if I click on California, it's going to show, so our, our quarterly return for January, that was, we. this is a demo, so it doesn't say filed, but uh, it was due on this date, how much tax, how much was due, and it would say filed. We have one now, April through June, that is due on June 31st. That is going, excuse me, July 31st, that is accruing. So it's gonna give you a breakdown for everything that we are currently doing for those particular states. And this is all of them, I think there's 15 listed here. And so here, here's a good one. So Florida, we have a lot of data. So all of 17, these are probably monthly and quarterly returns. Uh, you'll see here, yeah, so monthly returns for each of those states, total amount that was collected, total that was due, like this one was filed, tells you when it was filed. The only caveat is you do have to log in once a month or once a quarter and click the file now button. I will reiterate, you do have to log in once a month or once a quarter to click the file now button for us to file those returns. We will send you a note 24 hours prior and I think we even send something, you know, another notification prior to that as well. Uh, but you do have to log in to click the file now button. That's part of the kind of do it yourself, so to speak. So the third tab over is the transactions tab. You can see all of the individual transactions that you've sold or your sales from Amazon or any other marketplace right here within the actual platform. So if you wanted to see, you know, everything from Florida, I mean, you have your order ID, the date, the price, the tax, the total, the origin, the destination, the jurisdiction, the date, et cetera. This will tell you where it's from. So if this was Amazon FBA, I think it says FBA connector or something like that. This was a QuickBooks Online CSV file that we uploaded. One of the key things that's important is, and I, and I mentioned this earlier, you can upload your, your transactions from some of those other data sources. This is pretty much what you need. The order number, the date, the price, the tax, the total, origin, destination. We need that information in order to populate it to a return. And then in here, we'll have errors or alerts. So if you have any transactions that have errors, maybe there wasn't a jurisdiction, there was a mistake, for some reason, something just needs to be added to it, right? We will point that information out. You can make any adjustments or anything you need to do prior to actually filing the sales tax returns or logging in and actually clicking, clicking the file now button. So on the front end, and I should have talked about this earlier, just a brief visual for the data sources, right? Let's say you're selling on Amazon, eBay, and Etsy. You will select all of those connectors or those extractors, if you will, and it will pull all of that data in 
and populate it to where you need to. So we have the reconciliation purposes for remitting the returns and or remitting the money and actually handle the filing. So these are just a handful of, of, of all of ours. I'm sure, I mean, these will change. I feel like every other month I see a new logo that pops up or I get an email that says it's certified. Uh, so PayPal, uh, Stripe, Etsy, all of those, you can upload that information, uh, very simple. And if I click on upload here, this is where it will tell you we have data, we have guides on how to export out of these particular five over here. I think we have some more on the back end. We have a CSV template. We also have the ability, if you just said, hey, I'm on the second to last day, you know, the filing, but I, I took an order over the phone. You can actually go into Trust File and add that order manually. So you could say, put the date, the type of sale, or whether it was a refund, the amount, the tax, the order ID, a description, and the address. And you can add that transaction into Trust File in real time, should you need to get it to populate for a return. A um, couple other things, so we'll, we'll point out one or two more things here, and then we're going to open it up to questions for the last probably 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, I think I showed this earlier. This is where if you do want to have us handle the remittance or you want to utilize trust file for the remittance to the state, this is where you're actually going to set that up. So in the company, under payment through remittance, and you'll click add a payment account, you're going to put the routing number, the checking account number, confirm it, and the account nickname so that we know what this. This is also then when you get registered with Trust File for those actual forms, it's going to link to the DOR website to actually handle that remittance for you. So, uh, an activity log, I don't think I have a whole lot under here. So, uploaded a file, and this will tell you everything you've done, right? Created a connector, uploaded a file. Erin is our onboarding specialist. She's the one where if you purchase the FBA package for $3,000, she will get you onboarded on a welcome call. She'll walk you through how you set everything up. She will then check in with you 30 days later and make sure you're good to go just to give you peace of mind that you're up, running, live on the solution, um, as it may be, or however many states or, or whatnot. Um, I mentioned earlier over here, if you need to add a registration, if you need to manage your data sources, it will show you the total amount that's accruing. <clears throat> it will tell you if you have a free trial left. And then again, we have all the information here, so sales tax guides for your accounting platform, et cetera, et cetera. So this is really just a visual for, for what the solution looks like. Um, I'm going to go back out to the dashboard, and again, if you just have a single company or a single filing entity, it would just be the one box. Um, we have CPAs and some tax attorneys and folks that utilize uh, Trust File to file on behalf of their clients. Uh, it's very beneficial. It can definitely make life easier. Uh, but think about it like this. If you ever did have you know, a separate filing entity or multiple requirements where you're filing different, different tax returns for different entities, you can utilize one dashboard for trust file to handle all of that uh, in real time. And um, we do 12 month agreement. So when you sign up, we have a 30 day free trial and, and then you're locked in for a 12 month agreement once you decide to purchase the software. Um, and again, $240 annually for the, the standard. And then we just bill you per return or you pay a flat fee of $3,000 annually and it's an unlimited filing solution and it also comes with a welcome call and, and a setup and some assistance as well. <clears throat> so that's all I really wanted to show within Trust File today. So I'm gonna back out here. I'm going to jump all the way back just on a couple things to again, you know, what is Trust File? It's a filing solution. Uh, you can generate the inventory reports. We have signature ready returns. You file directly through the software. We don't charge for transactions. That's one of the things that our competitors uh, typically do. I don't know why you charge for transactions if you're not doing a tax calculation. And and to be very clear, the word estimate or estimated tax don't ever belong in the same sentence. So if somebody's telling you they're estimating the tax, um, I would probably strongly encourage you to, to, to think a little otherwise. But again, um, you know, here's just to reiterate on the final part, you know, these are the reasons why you may need to get registered to collect and remit tax outside of your home state. Um, I'm going to open it up to the questions right now. So give me one minute and I'm just going to go back to our first home page here. So bear with me. All right. So let me get to some of these questions. So, all right. So first one, can we explain more about, so the home rule states. So the home rule states like Colorado, Alabama, Louisiana, I think I touched on a little bit is they have locally administered taxes. Basically the people in Commerce City, Colorado, can make up whatever rule they want. They can say software as a service is not taxable at their level, but then is taxable at the state level. 
that's an example of why those states are challenging. They make their own rules at the locality, local municipality level, as well as any parishes in Louisiana. We, Louisiana is a very tough state. Hopefully that helps. Uh, which states limit look back period for FBA sellers? Usually a look back period is three years. Any state will allow zero or one during a VDA. Um, it really depends. That's a great question. Um, every state is different. Uh, there, there's not really a, a, a standard period to look back. They have the ability, if they come across you, to look back as far as they want. You know, typically in a VDA, we're going to go, okay, we would hopefully not, li not look back seven years, but limit it to three or four, right? That's assuming you are enrolled in the FBA program. Um, can you please list the four states that are common ones to get your product in? Yeah, great question. So again, California, Texas, just because they're two of the bigger states out there. California, Texas, Illinois, and Pennsylvania are typically ones. And I'm taking this, this is not direct from me, this is from an FBA seller that we partner with who gave us a bunch of information and said this is what you need to know and this is what I would tell other uh, FBA sellers. Uh, in your example for a California company, did they pay $250,000? Uh, they paid a lot, yeah. They, uh, um, I've had some folks that have gone in the VDA program, didn't even realize they were registered in that state and have, have had some really challenges. Um, uh, let's see here, so $3 million revenue is correct. Yeah, it is a lot of money. Uh, yeah, and, and, and I'm just trying to, to make sure people are aware that these, that this is possible, right? There is a chance you potentially get uh, a letter or something from California or Illinois or Texas asking you about your business. And it's not always, you're never, you, I think the, the, the conception is a lot of people think they're going to get, never going to get audited because they're never going to find your books, right? People get, go through a sales tax audit because of who they sell to. So if I sold to a business that was in horrible compliance and they went through a three month audit and that auditor saw my name of my business who I sold to them 75 times in three months, it might be advantageous of him to talk to me. And I'll leave it at that. Uh, do you file B&O tax to Washington? Question about the B&O, there is a portion of that that we do handle. We're actually based out of Washington. Uh, it's kind of a case-by-case -case basis. It really depends. Typically, you're only subject to that tax should you have a physical presence there. So I, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe if you're just enrolled in the FBA program, that's the only reason you have an obligation, you may not have to file the B&O tax. Uh, but again, uh, please reach out to me after the call and, and we can talk about that. Uh, by local returns, you mean home rule returns. Yeah, so Commerce City, Colorado, um, Johnsontown Parish, uh, Louisiana, um, any any local, local area in Alabama, uh, you potentially have a local return into uh, the state. Uh, the question from uh, one other person was, what is Avatax? So Avitax is our, our core product, if you will, where we have an integration to QuickBooks, NetSuite, Microsoft, Demandware, uh, Magento. We plug into those platforms where we handle the calculations. We do the product taxability. It's our tax that's calculated. Trust file is more specific towards marketplace sellers or people that don't need a tax calculation. Let's say, for example, you're in Massachusetts and you use QuickBooks and you do fulfillment by merchant probably don't have a lot of obligations, meaning Massachusetts has a flat rate of 6.5% and you're selling something that's fully taxable, you don't need a software to do that. Uh, but Avitax is our, our, our other offering where we're integrated to, the plat to about 600 platforms where we make the tax determination, we calculate the tax, we put the tax back on the invoice shopping cart um, at the line item level in real time. Uh, next question. So you won't file home rule returns. We have to do it. If you are using trust file to handle the returns filing, we will file the returns at the state level. However, you will be able to decipher and see how much you owe at the city or local level on that same return. I showed the Florida return. In Colorado, it's going to say the state level, and then it's going to show you how much you owe at those individual levels that you could then file it itself. Uh, so correct. We can file the state level returns. But in those three states that are challenging, if you do have local returns due, you would have to handle that outside of trust file or on the DOR. Now, that could change in three months, six months, nine months, two years. At some point, we will have those capabilities. Uh, can I use Avalara? Can I use Avalara as I decide to apply for the streamlined sales tax to register? Yep. Yeah, we do do that. 
one of the big things for the SSD program is you either enroll in all of them or nothing. It's an all or nothing. If you're already registered in one of those states, it's a little more complicated, but if you know that you are potentially going to have to collect or remit tax in those 24 states, the SST states are aside from Amazon FBA, just to be perfectly clear. The 26 and 24 are a similar number, but they have nothing to do with each other, so to speak. Um, some vendors collect taxes on the invoice to us when drop shipping. How do we prevent from paying double taxes? Great question. I'm really glad we, you asked that. So there are a handful of states that consider drop shipping to be a nexus building activity, right? So Texas may say, if you drop ship here, you need to get registered. Because think about it. I'm in North Carolina. I'm shipping my product from Texas via drop shipping to somebody in Florida. That's my inventory in Texas. I would potentially have to get registered in Texas because that's my inventory. What you would need to do is you'd want to get registered in Texas, and then you would also apply for a resale certificate so that person doesn't charge you tax when then you go to turn around and resell Because again, tax is derived where ownership takes place or where the ship to address is, is, is based on, right? Um, we can help do registrations. Um, hopefully that, Janelle, hopefully that answers your question. But the, the, the right way to do it would be get registered in Texas, apply for a resale certificate, give that certificate to the guy who you're drop shipping from, who you buy from, so he doesn't charge you tax. And then let's say you send it back to North Carolina where you're located, you would then charge tax there because you have an obligation. Um, we do help registrations. We have an entire tax advisory services team that's made up of former CPAs, state auditors, tax attorneys, et cetera. Uh, we do registrations. We can do tax exposure analysis. We do voluntary disclosure agreements. We can do back filing. We can I don't think we do deregistration services. We used to be. I'm not sure if we do that now. Um, but we can do registrations. We have a standard registration offering that is roughly $100 per state where we're gonna make sure you have a portal to log into. We'll fill in the information about your, your, your company for the individual states. We will review it, and then we'll give you a cover letter that tells you everything you need to send in and mail to those states, along with the actual letter for those states. That's around $100 per. That's a little bit more of a manual process um, than, than some people really want. Uh, you have to, sometimes you have to, uh, it, they'll ask you a question, like in, in, in Nevada, if you collect over you know, $3,000 of tax, you pay an additional, you write an additional check when you get registered. Some states you write like a $10 check, a $100 check, that's all aside from Avalara, but we will tell you in that cover letter what you need to send. Now that's kind of the do-it-yourself one. We have another, which is full and expedited registrations where we'll fill a lot of, you'll fill the stuff out and we'll do a lot of it on your behalf, send it in, et cetera. Um, so we have two, two offerings standard and then full and, full and registrated. All right, so a couple things. I'm getting ready to, I'm gonna go back so everybody has my email here, so bear with me. Um, how do I register for the uh, 24 streamlined states? Please reach out to me after the call. We can discuss getting registered for the SST program. Uh, there's a lot more to it than that is, than just getting registered. It's worth a conversation. Um, can I register going forward if you've, if you've had exposure over the last three years with a start date? I mean, I say this in a very nice way. I mean, I, I can't answer that, but what I would suggest would be to sign up for a free trial or just look at your sales. Pull some sort of report through your seller account and see what were your sales over the last three years in, in, in these 20 states. If one of them is half a million dollars, that one I would probably take a little more seriously. If it's $3,000 or $1,000 or nothing at all, I would probably just get registered. And, and again, that, I'm not giving advice, not tax attorney, but... Um, one of the things they're going to ask you, and good question, John, thank you for asking, I appreciate it. One of the things they're going to ask you is, when did you first start doing business in this state? It would be very smart not to lie on that question. It's one of the first ones. Uh, I don't want to say the felony word or, or, uh, or any of those other things, but that's a big no-no. You don't want to say, I just started doing business on April 24th, 2018. Because per my example earlier, if you then go the next month as you get registered, you do half a million dollars in sales, that's a huge red flag, right? Businesses scale. They start small, they grow bigger. Um, hopefully that answers a little bit of your question. <coughs> if you don't feel like they're ever going to find you, then yeah, go ahead and get registered. I mean, it's your decision as a business owner or a CPA um, to do that. Uh, let's see here. So I think that is, I don't have any other questions currently to right now. We're at 50 minutes past the hour. I'll give it another five minutes. 
um, please type in any more, and then and then we'll give everybody a couple minutes back. So um, no need to apologize. Uh, most urgent questions: Which states are you required to file tax in? Again, this is this is where our inventory will be beneficial. As I mentioned, our, our inventory report through TrustFile will tell you where you first had inventory. Um, but you have a couple ways to go about it. You need to think about. Should I just get registered in all 26 states? Should I try and find out where my inventory was in those states via the Avalara uh, Trust File Inventory Report? Or look at your sales in all those states. I look at the ones where you have the highest dollar amount, potentially the highest exposure, and see if it makes sense to get registered. Um, Nikki, happy to jump on a call. Uh, please reach out or shoot me an email. We can definitely talk about it. Um, one more question about the SST. If I register in all 24 states, is it okay to have a start date as of today? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know if I can really answer that. That's the borderline kind of advice, and I'm not permitted to do that. Uh, but but John or, or whoever sent it in there, uh, please reach out to me after, and we, we can talk about it offline. But typically, that's one of the first questions they ask when you get registered is, when did you first start conducting business in this state? So any other questions, please fire them in. I'll sit on for a couple more minutes. I, I, I'm going to kind of end with a thank you but i'll still be on the call i really thank everybody for joining today uh, hopefully this was beneficial uh hopefully you please reach out to obviously our, our partners over at ship station they're great people they do great work uh great partners um you know we're all we're all working together to achieve compliance and you, and you have two great companies here that can definitely help you um you know as much or, or as little as you need um from a compliance perspective as, as well as shipping Yep, so it should be on the screen right here, uh, matthew.hammond at avalara, matthew.hammond at avalara.com. Please shoot me an email. We can definitely uh, uh, definitely have a conversation. I have a, I'm based in Durham, North Carolina. I have uh, a team of five uh, sales reps that are on my team here. Three of the four of them are here in Durham. One of them is actually based in Seattle. So you'll either be speaking to someone like myself or, or one of my reps on my team. We have a couple of folks that are specifically focused on Amazon as a as a direct uh, direct connector, if you will, or direct uh, filing solution. So we ha we have the right people here. Happy to jump on a call. Uh, thanks, Whitney, for putting that in there. Yep, Matthew.Hammond at Avalara. Again, I'm located in North Carolina, so on Eastern Time. So if you shoot me an email and it's uh, 9:30 Pacific, it may be the next day before I get back to you, but I'll be sure to. Uh, either reach out to you directly or, or have somebody on my team here uh, discuss whatever questions you have. But again, thank you everyone for joining. I really appreciate your time. Hopefully this was beneficial. Um, hopefully if you have any other questions, reach out. Again, we, we want to help people achieve compliance and, and you know, uh, grow your business. You know, focus on revenue generating activities, something that, you know, sales tax is as far from as you can get.